Hello and welcome back to Foose Entertainment. This time for my review of Iron Man 2008. Although it's actually the third movie in the timeline of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the direct universe, it is the first one produced. And all I gotta say is, um, I haven't watched this movie in a long, long time. And I remember it being in, uh, like, okay. But I didn't think it was great. After um, watching um, Iron Man last night, I definitely, my opinion changes, it's a, it's a great movie. Nothing but good things to say about it. Now, um, the premise of the film... A multi-millionaire, um, a multi-millionaire by the name of Tony Stark, basically um, is field testing a new kind of missile called the Jericho missile. He develops weapons for military. And uh, he gets captured. He gets captured by terrorists in the Middle East and Afghanistan who basically used his own weapons against him. This throws him a little over the edge and he decides to become a um, humanitarian after escaping from developing um, a suit of armor. Now, during his captivity we discovered that um, took a very deadly blow from strapnel from one of his own weapons to his midsection of his body. And there's strapnel he just can't get to that is getting closer and closer to his heart. And so to keep uh, the strapnel from poisoning his heart and insides, they actually have a electromagnet with a power source powering it that you pretty much see in the middle middle of his um, chest area. And that's what, keeps, that's what keeps him alive. We use this what's known as an arc reactor that he made out of scrap metal while in captivity and develops a, um, a suit of armor. It basically breaks out. It makes its way back to um, America. And then he decides to um, stand up against um, his profiteering of making weapons for the military and decides to end it. Meanwhile, developing um, the uh, Iron Man suit that we all know him to wear in these movies. Now, um, why did he make the suit? People always kind of been curious, but it was actually said in the movie. I never noticed it before. A lot of people always miss this too. He built the suit so that he could go after the people who are abusing his um, innovations and using them for um, bad deeds. But really, at the end of the day, he um, does what he does to make up for all of the war and mayhem and, and killing that had been done with his weapons division they did for the government. It's said there, actually. I forgot the exact words, but it's said. He actually says in the movie, and it kind of makes sense. Of course, um, his partner in the weapon division, played by Jeff Bridges, forget his name, um, He turns out to be the villain. He actually wanted Tony Stark to die, and I and I, I, I think um, what's this called? The Middle East, because that word's called for some reason it's hard for me to pronounce. Afghanistan. Afghanistan. I guess it's not so bad, but um, what's called the Middle East? He's supposed to die in the Middle East so that he could take over the company. And um, then die. And so he tries to um, go 
he'll start again by taking the arc reactor out of his chest and, you know, his power source. And he develops his own Iron Man suit, which is a way bigger, way more powerful. And, of course, he has to um, destroy um, his project to keep it out of the hands of bad people. Now, what's interesting about this superhero is the fact that He's ambitious. I mean, um, he was told by the end of the movie not to expose who he is. And um, he's like, hmm, fuck it, I'm going to do it anyways. I'm Iron Man. And expose it to the world that, that he is Iron Man. So I thought that was very interesting. Um, it's going to be a little bit quicker review than Captain America First Adventure because I have to get going. But um, audio and video quality. I don't usually do this, but um, I didn't watch this movie alone. It actually was um, one of my fans over that is down here where I live um, who actually um, watched it with me. And he pointed out something. Now, I kind of adjust things on television for future um, showings without actually changing the picture settings. But it's still there a little bit as part of the film. I guess there's a, a little bit of a gray gray in the black tone of the movie. Maybe someone else noticed that when they when they reviewed this movie. But um for the typical wear and tear of the of the video, I would say this is a pretty darn good top notch movie. I really would say that this one um has more of a digital look to it than Captain America the First Avenger did. That one was more of a nostalgic like nineteen forties retro look. This one has more of a digital look to it. But color temperature wise, it still kind of feels like it's um, neutral with mostly warm with just a touch of cool temperature. And that's not, that tends to be a theme, color template wise, with these movies. Which is kind of cool. And of course, um, the audio quality. This is the only one that's in Dolby True HD out of all these films. <coughs> but that doesn't stop it from being an intensified track. There's a good amount of use of uh, amplified effect from the sub. Um, very good directional effects with the speakers. There's a lot of really, really good things to be said about um, the audio quality of Iron Man. It's definitely an experience. Very impressive for Adobe True HD track it, to have this type of experience because um, a lot of them can flat at times. This one did not. So definitely enjoyed that. That's all I need to say about the audio quality. Now, um, the quick opinion of the movie. I say from a Marvel standpoint, from all the movies combined, this is not the best one, obviously. But I can see how this movie would actually create the Marvel Cinematic Universe and take it forward. I can actually see that. And I see it works. It works out quite well. Very, very impressed with this movie. Well, that's pretty much my um, thoughts and opinions on 2008's Iron Man. The only thing I will point out, though, is it seems so far I have to watch the Captain America the First Avenger, this one, be watching Captain Marvel later this week when in movie theaters, and we'll be actually making that available to you before I make this one available to you. I'll do and record it now to kind of keep it within the timeline. With um, Captain America: First Adventure taking place in 1940s, Captain Marvel taking place in 1980s, and this one, you know, was modern equipment when it was filmed. So, um, kind of to keep it within that. But I would say that so far they have casted these characters brilliantly. I mean, Chris Evans is Captain Amer America. I mean, you can't find anybody else that can quite do it like he can. Right down in Junior, he is Iron Man. I really don't see how anybody could ever replace him. Although I have read that they are trying to do that, which is going to be mm, 
don't know about that. Might backfire on you. No. Hollywood, maybe you shouldn't do it. <laughs> it says pay him more money to stay on. But, yeah. Um, that's how it kind of goes. And I see the same thing go with all the other um, superheroes that are all casted quite well. For the role. Well, that's pretty much it. I will see all you um, ladies and gents um, later when I review um, The Incredible Hulk, which I believe is the next one in the timeline. But whereas everyone is next in timeline, I will be reviewing that next. Um, until then, I'll see you guys later.